Hey, what's up? This is Mauricio with CrossFit Cypher. I'm going to be breaking down this in-body results sheet for you today. This is really useful because this is what we do with all of our new members at the No Sweat Intro, and it's something we do periodically with all of our members to make sure you're seeing progress. This goes with, you know, how you feel, how you feel in your clothes, how you feel in your life, as well as your objective performance improvements in the gym. This is the other objective piece that I think a lot of people are missing because too often people are only looking at weight on the scale, but not necessarily their body composition, which means how much muscle you're carrying, how much fat you're carrying, and how it's changing over time, as well as even how much water you're carrying and different proportions of your muscle across the body that the in-body can also capture. So this is a typical result sheet here. That being said, uh, your results may vary quite a bit depending on things you've done and where you're at in your life. But this is a uh, Jane Doe, five foot one point eight, fifty one year old female results, and her results are going to be compared statistically to others in her cohort, which mean, means other people like her. The Embody is great because it has thousands of results to compare to to let you know, you know, where you are and where you might want to be. Okay. So without further ado, I've uh, edited this in Canva a little preliminarily, and uh, you're welcome to mess with that and do the same. Um, but basically, the first section here is just uh, showing you where your weight is coming from in a very basic sense. So total body water, this is something we track and can fluctuate uh, due to multiple factors, you know, your sleep and your hormonal variations, how much salt you're uh, taking in through your diet and your exercise routine. Before and after exercise, there's also big variations. Typically, we always want to do in-body scans uh, before exercise for consistent measurements. Uh, so your water weight there, plus your dry lean mass, without basically your lean mass without the water, plus your body fat mass equals your current total weight. So this is already interesting just being able to break this down, but the next section below is even more interesting because it has statistics involved it is comparing you uh, to a population of healthy people. Okay, so this is the muscle fat analysis. This is the most interesting part because this uh, chart here, this line is percentage based units for both the weight, the skeletal muscle mass, which is your muscles, uh, plus your bones and tendons and ligaments, plus your body fat mass here is also percentage based. That means that it's comparing your results to other 5 foot 1.8 inch 51 year old females and so it's giving you that very uh, relevant comparison and lets you know where you might want to go. So this 100 here is 100% of ideal or of the healthy norm. Okay. And so if we're looking at just the body weight here, well, we can see that Jane Doe here is about close to the 115% line overweight. Okay. 15% overweight, basically. Okay. Uh, but that's just the body weight. We can look at more depth, though, with the skeletal muscle mass. So, aha. Look at that, she's actually uh, to the left here, close to 90% on the skeletal muscle mass, which is interesting because that's under the healthy norm there of 100%. Okay, so while Jane is overweight, she's actually a little under muscle weight. Okay, and then the body fat mass, well, that tells the fuller picture. It's showing that she's way up here in the 220%, so 120% over where she wants to be compared to the normal or healthy center line here of 100%, okay? So you've seen I've uh, written out these quote C, quote more sh shallow C we call it I and D. What's that about? Well, the connection of the dots here basically forms uh, a C shape, or I'd call it an acute C shape, uh, just connecting the dots and drawing a line. So the graphical representation of what progress looks like is progressing to a more shallow C, which means that we start uh, building up some of that muscle a little bit, dropping the body fat mass. Okay, let's see if I can do this in the app here. It's a little challenging. Okay, and we'll see probably the weight go down just a little bit there. And then trying to roughly connect the dots here. That would put us in a more shallow C profile. I kind of just used a open parentheses here for that. Okay. That would be a great sign of initial progress and initial success. Okay. After that, we'd like to still make some progress further. Basically, we'd like it if we could draw a straight line down here. I'm just going to delete one of these. 
Okay, and so this is what we want, generally speaking, would be some awesome progress, just getting everything on an even line there. So if we can get the weight, bring up the skeletal muscle mass, and bring down the body fat mass, that's going to create a straight eye profile here. That'll be a really huge achievement, honestly. This is the work of months of doing the right things with your fitness and your nutrition and your lifestyle in general. Okay. Finally, we don't stop there necessarily. Generally, we want uh, for a healthy fit person, their muscle mass to be above the average. Uh, so we'd like to kick it up probably to the... Uh, hundred and ten percent range there it kind of just depends on what your goals what you ultimately want your goals to be let's see if I can bring this back here there you go something like that okay and that's a rough kind of D shape there usually if we're carrying a little extra muscle mass the total weight may even be above a hundred but that's still healthy and a lean physique and generally what most people are going for, and they don't even realize it, okay? So that's the basic progression for a C, to a shallower C, to an I, to a D, and that's a process of many months, and I'll go over below exactly what it takes. Finally, before I move on to the next section here, I'd just like to highlight the body fat mass. It's also represented up here. This is something we track independently, and it's a very good independent data point uh, because your water weight and your muscle mass can change a lot to do due to different influences, such as your exercise routine, even your sleep and your hormonal cycles. Uh, but the body fat mass is actually pretty stubborn, and it generally only moves in response to changes in the diet. So whereas your muscle and your water may go all over the place, the fat mass ain't going nowhere unless we start eating more you know, healthy foods, drinking less soda, eating more lean meats and stuff like that. Okay? So... Oftentimes, when we're kind of focusing in with the client, we'll say, hey, how's this body fat mass number looking? Yeah, you've been coming to the gym four or five times a week. That's great. But something's going on here in our diet or in our lifestyle factors like our sleep and stress if the body fat mass isn't moving by itself. Okay, so some really interesting stuff can be gleaned there. And then it's down to the uh, obesity analysis section it's called here, which is all... Um, like relative numbers, so something divided by something, okay? So for the body mass index, this is just your kilograms divided by height uh, squared ratio here. And it's not something we tend to focus on a lot. Obviously, obviously, if it's very high, that's something we flag. So up in the 35 plus 40, 50 range, that means like basically you're much wider than you are tall, and that's something we need to work on. But generally, uh, we don't focus on it too much if it's in the normal range because even having more muscle mass will penalize you on the BMI. So it's, though it's something doctors like to use and in the hospitals they use it because it's quick and can be applied without doing any special measurements, uh, we tend to not focus on BMI too much. Uh, the percent body fat, however, I should have made a little star here because this is the one number that kind of will encapsulate everything. Uh, and if you only want to focus on one thing, the percent body fat is the thing to focus on. You'll also see more, the most like tangible visual changes, like how you look in the mirror uh, when you see changes in your percent body fat. If the body fat percentage goes up, you're going to be looking a little more fluffy. If the body fat percentage goes down, you're going to be looking more lean. Okay. And so just kind of highlighting here with this example, Jane Doe, she's at 37.5% body fat, which is pretty normal for what we see people uh, coming in the front door with. And uh, you'll see the beginning of the dash or the healthy range here is at about 28. Okay, so I like to highlight the difference there. That's a nine and a half percentage points. And interesting thing here is that we found uh, through testing and lots of empirical data that a sustainable body fat reduction or change rate is one percentage point per month. Okay, and that is actually only after you've started doing all the right things, basically. Okay, so the time it's going to take for you to hit those goals is pretty much capped at a percentage per month. And so that's going to help you reframe kind of what uh, type of commitment you're in for when you start down this health and fitness journey, when you join the gym or join our gym. Okay. So nine and a half percentage points is going to take at least nine and a half months. Okay. And those first few months are really critical because it's about making sure our habits and our eating and our lifestyle is moving in that direction generally. Even if it's 
half a percent per month or a quarter of a percent per month. It's so important that we're just going in the right direction because then we can refine and tweak things from there and accelerate that process to that percentage per month rate. Okay, so to get down to that initial beginning of the healthy range is going to take nine and a half months. Uh, we're probably going to check in more often than that and make little micro goals so that we're seeing like, you know, can we get a percent this month? Can we get half a percent this month? That's the kind of level we're looking at for your action steps. Uh, but finally, to get back into the middle of the uh, healthy range there, kind of in the ideal, I want to be fit and healthy, is going to be that 23% mark for a 51-year-old female. And so that's going to take an additional five percentage points, therefore an additional five months. Okay. Same thing if you want to get onto the leaner side. This is where we generally see actual like muscle definition and more meaningful improvements in your performance, your ability to do pull-ups and stuff like that. Uh, you're generally going to want to be down to the 18% or the low 20 range there. Obviously, depends on your goals. Some people will be really happy just to break into this healthy range at all. Um, but this is kind of what it's looking like in terms of time to reach these levels. Okay, so overall here we got 9.5 plus 5 plus 5. That's 19.5. That's about a year and a half. Okay, and that's what it really takes. And this is the mindset changes we're trying to facilitate getting people out of that. Like how much change can I make in six weeks? Oh, I got a big vacation coming up in two months. How many pounds can I lose by then? Those are still good motivations, uh, but really take a step back and see the big picture if you really want to see this through and make it a lifestyle where you can achieve these big numbers and keep the weight off then it's going to take a process that's a lot more just consistent and incremental okay finally just moving down here there's some interesting stuff it does with the lean analysis so it looks at how many pounds are in your left arm and compare that to your right arm Compare that to your left leg and your right leg. It can actually measure differences here. We actually see people with like old injuries or some sort of a limitation where they weren't able to use their left arm. It can capture that difference. And as you improve it, capture that improvement too. Uh, so just looking at the left to right here, we typically flag something if there's a greater difference than 0.4 pounds. Actually, just put pounds in there. So if it's greater than 0.4, we're generally going to want to do something about it like corrective exercises like a little more stuff on the weaker side of your body okay similarly on the legs both of these uh, left and right comparisons here are within the range though uh, but we also look at the percentages top to bottom here so it looks like uh, although it's still under 100 here the legs are way lower down at 72.8 and so we're definitely going to want to focus on the legs a little more that'll come up naturally through the type of programming we do already in the gym but if we were working one-on-one -on -one with you, we could definitely uh, focus on that a little bit more, okay? Uh, the trunk here is right in the middle. That's something we'd also like to keep an eye on and just make sure all these numbers, percentage-wise, are pretty close to one another. Finally, there's the body comp history here, and this is showing some like real results, basically. It's like not super dramatic drop-off of the percent body fat or the weight. It's like there's a, a story here and a bit of struggle and it's not like the maximum rate of anything. It's just like this is what consistent hard work with a little bit of ebbs and flows here and there uh, look like. Okay, so started out at 143.9. It's got the date down here in October. A few weeks later, just showing a few pounds down, some initial success. That's awesome. Usually at the start, we will see a slightly faster rate um, that, that'll quickly drop off to a more steady rate. And then this is like a just a few days later, actually. So this is uh, maybe just needed a little retest because this one was not at the right time of day or something. And then look at that. And another month later here, still seeing some great progress. And look at that. That's already seven pounds in two months. That's pretty awesome. And again, that 2%, that percent per month is bearing out here. Okay. And then fast forward to January. Oh, look, we took a little step back. That's typically over the holidays. We know how that goes down usually, right? But right back on it. February, a month later, getting another percent down, and then we've accomplished uh, about three overall here over the course of four months. Okay, fast forward another month, another percent down. Fast forward another two months, two percent down. And this is, again, kind of the real life stuff where you're not going to be like a straight line. You're going to have a little up and down to it. Okay, but overall, like going from 143 to 130 in seven months, 
That's a significant accomplishment for sure. And that she was able to maintain largely her muscle mass during this time. It's pretty hard to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. Uh, but even maintaining the muscle and then losing the body fat and then the body fat percentage, that's a big accomplishment. Okay, kudos for Jane Doe. All right, and just some last odds and ends here. The machine gives you some reference numbers uh, just based on getting to this 100% center line here. And so your body fat mass, the machine knows you need to lose 22 pounds to get down to this 100% center line here with these numbers. And it also knows you need to gain 8.4 pounds to bring the skeletal muscle mass up to 100% here too. Okay, And we know healthy body fat loss happens at about half pound to a pound a week. And healthy lean mass gains happen at 0.25 to half pounds per week or about half the rate and so that's going to inform our goal setting and reasonable expectations of progress as well all right just a couple more numbers here so this is our lean body mass which is just the water weight plus the dry lean mass together and that's really useful because that informs our protein grams per day it's another one of those one-to-one -one ratios and so Jane Doe here needs to be eating at least 82 grams of protein per day. You can break that down into different meals and times of day and start in on that process of making sure at least the protein is being met because that's going to fuel uh, the muscle maintenance or muscle gain and help with the fat loss as well and kind of offset a lot of that hunger that can come otherwise. And 82 is a good starting point. If you want to gain muscle, it should be higher still, probably in the 100, 120 range, 1.2 to 1.4 ratio. And that's going to be a really good starting point. Even if you're not ready to track all your food, just tracking the protein and then making sure you're getting enough vegetables, basically, that'll take care of like 80% of your initial progress. Okay. Finally, there's the uh, basal metabolic rate here. We call that the resting metabolism or the Netflix rate. It's like how much energy your body uses even when you're doing nothing at all, just being alive, basically. Okay? And so we want to make sure we're eating more than that, even to lose weight and especially to lose fat and gain muscle. Okay, so typically we, apl we apply an acti activity level multiplier uh, between 1.4 to 2 or greater, depending on what type of job you do and how physical it is. Are you sitting at a desk? You're doing construction. That's a whole different ball game, and you're burning a lot more in general. Um, and how many times per day you're coming to the gym, if you're working out on your own extra, how many hours you're logging, that's all a factor. And this is actually like an iterative process, which means that the first number is going to be a ballpark number. And then meeting with the nutrition coach again or coming in for an in-body scan again is going to then inform what your actual uh, better target is for your daily calories too. Okay, we don't always track calories with people starting out. Sometimes we just like to focus on kind of quality and just getting the right types of foods and lifestyle in place. But at a certain point, uh, being aware of the numbers and your macros, of course, is helpful too. Hopefully this whole picture has been helpful. Again, this is what we do with all of our new members coming in the front door. It's complimentary with your no sweat intro because it's really useful to see where you're at. And we want to help first in terms of letting people know like this is the process. Here's where you're at. Here's what it's going to take. Is this something you're ready to commit to? And then we go from there. And for our regular members, this is something that you should be checking in on from time to time. Like you can follow your own nutrition plan if you want. Come do ours if you want to make sure you're seeing success and have accountability. But getting some objective data is going to always be important. Just like knowing how much weight is on the bar is important for your progress and your safety. So is taking in body scans regularly so you can know what you're doing right and what you might need to change to see further progress. Hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.